You know, it is my great privilege and also it is, it's just a, a thrill to sit down with Ken Keyes, the president of Consulting Resource Group. And uh, we've been talking about personality and we're turning the corner today and talking about your gifts. Welcome, Ken. Thanks, you know, Brian. I'm so thrilled about this because, you know, everyone has a purpose. Uh, our birth is the identification that God called us on this planet to accomplish something. Absolutely. And it's so important that we really understand what that purpose is in order to fulfill and have the, the zest of life. Absolutely. But part, you know, we've been talking about, you know, clarifying your values. We've been talking about clarifying your personal style I and, mean, you know, your health and wellness, all these different things, your yes. confidence factor. But in addition to that are separate measures. Mm -hmm. So gifts, talents, abilities, interests are separate pieces. And what happens, Brian, sometimes it becomes overwhelming. People really can't figure out how to find it. Now, I, I need you to go back over that because, I mean, you, you say this so uh, effortlessly, but some people uh, separate and help us understand the difference between gifts, abilities, and talents. Well, when we think about personal style, that's what I'm born with. We sure. think about vows, uh, values. Those are internal motivators for us. Yes. But a gift is something that God has given us but we've also, when we think about talents, but there's also a, another word we use called interests. Okay. So I don't know why I love to speak. Give me an audience of 5,000 people yes. and I'm on. Now there are other people said, give me a bullet instead of 5,000 people or, <laughs> yeah. or, or, and I don't mean that mean spirit. I just sure. said that it's, this is fearful for other yeah. people. It's a difficult thing. So what happens is that it's our responsibility to kind of do additional searching, Brian, yes. to figure out what are those interests. See, I don't believe in motivation. Motivation is a myth, mm. is that interests compel, interests energize us, interests, it doesn't mean it's not work, but yes. interests actually help us to kind of realize our potential, which we were talking about earlier. And so gifts and talents are some things that come example is, my son is a gifted musician. Yes. <laughs> I took accordion when I was younger. This is not good. And, not, not and he work. doesn't really want me to sing beside him in church. You know, sure. these kinds of things, dad, yeah. you're tone deaf, these yeah. things. But he has this gift of music. Sure. So there are other people that just has the gift. So it's part of that birthright that God has given us that we need to discover. I'm glad you said that because I think there's a, there is a lot of people that are watching and they believe that I want to be a life coach. I want to be a motivational speaker. Right. And one thing that I find is a lot of times when you have self-help, analyze, self, what it does is it spends a lot of time on saying, um, know your audience, speak to your audience, sit up, make sure you put a posture of, of outside control. But what it doesn't do is work on the inside, and that is the spirit of man. And that's what I love about you. Talk to us a little bit about that, how important, because after that, I mean, that's just a facade. I mean, that's a pretty face, and you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still working on that. You know, slim waist, pretty face, not working, I, but I'm keeping hope alive. But you know, <laughs> talk to us about how do we, how do we now not just do the, the techniques, but we actually do the actual work on the inside? Well, part of us have to acknowledge the emotions that are going on when we're engaging things. So sure. uh, the other thing is the Holy Spirit guides us, right? And so these tools are in concert with, they are not to replace that. So I want to be clear to everybody watching. Yes. Now, when I work with corporate audiences and secular audiences, I can't go, uh, I can't include the spirit as part of that discussion, though I make overtones that that's where we come from. So we're respectful in their journey. Sure. But for us is that God has created us each uniquely. So I'll give you an example. I remember I was doing a workshop for a denial nomination for their senior leadership. And in that workshop was an individual and we discovered as part of that process, you know what? I was senior pastor for five years and it was the five most miserable years of my life. And mm. I said, why was that? Because I was doing what I wasn't called to do. I'm really an associate pastor. I'm really a supported role. And so there's wow. all these pressures. You know, one of the things I mentioned in my other book, Why Are You More Like Me, is that ambition and for society means that I need to be upwardly mobile. Right. When I did my MBA study at 4,000 pieces of data is that I found that dissatisfaction w increased as my role in increased. Yeah. So a lot of times I get promoted. I go into positions that I'm really not supposed to be at. We have yeah. pastors yes. who are supposed to be machinists. Mm -hmm. We have machinists who are supposed to be pastors. Man, you can and you just cover the whole Scale well, right there. There. And so you open up a can there. <laughs> Keep going though. Exactly. So what we've done in you know my book on how to find purpose is that 
again, is to segment all these different pieces. I went through this myself in uh, 1990. I knew I was supposed to speak, but not about what and to who. Yeah. So I journaled for four and a half months following the process that I have in our purpose book. Now, is, is this the place that we recognize what our gift is as well as yes. we start to journal? As we go through it, because this is not an assessment. It is a roadmap to be able to help determine you answer the questions. So okay. the questions are there. So only Brian can answer the questions that this is motivational to me. This yep. is an interest of mine. These are these pieces. And again, as we mentioned with Laura Lynn, is that sometimes we have cultural pressures. You're not supposed to do this. Right. Remember a friend of mine, my wife works in the university yes. as an academic coach, and there was an individual who came in in tears, and she was failing her science courses. And what had happened is her father wanted, had designated her as a research scientist at their manufacturing company. Okay. But she loved the arts. Mm. She loved acting. She loved those she pieces. And so the pressure again was not allowing my heart. You know, God doesn't make this a burden. Yep. He allows us to be able to do the discovery. Now we have to do the work. Yes. We have to show up. We now, have to take responsibility. Now I like that because so many times what people want in, is a breakthrough. They said, I need a breakthrough. I'm getting ready to go into the new year and I need to see a new me. But what they don't have is a growth through. Yeah. Because if you have a breakthrough, you're going to need another breakthrough. But if you have a growth through, you'll never have to go back where you broke through. So talk to us about how do we practically now put some meat on the bone and, and really understand this gift and now begin to activate the gift? Well, we go and we test our gift and test our assumptions. And so say, is that the Holy Spirit? Is that really what I'm supposed to be doing? My wife and says, so, it. is that the L-A-R-D or the L-O-R-D? <laughs> is okay. that the sugar in your donut or is yeah. that really a <laughs> call of God? Yeah, that's right. With fritters this morning, it must be the sugar, right? As <laughs> yeah. a part of those people. So uh, part of this is that, again, you have to use tools and roadmaps and pay okay. attention to that. It goes back to doing that work of stepping in and starting to document. So I journaled. Mm -hmm. And then what I did is I reviewed the journals and I circled and I started to identify and I created sort of a word grid of the core things that God wanted me to do. He wants me to speak and encourage, to travel, to help people. My purpose is to help others to live, lead, and work on purpose. Yes. So established a vision statement. So with individuals, we get people to break down little micro vision statements because vision statements are active tense words. They are never fulfilled. They're always being fulfilled. Active tense words. So it means I never stop. Yes. So you mentioned you know, learning. When's, when's learning to stop? It's not. My, my children are 17 and 18. The jobs they're going to do are yes. not even invented yet in some cases. Right. And so there's this continuous journey of unfolding. And we, we were joking with off cameras that, hey, I had a business before there was the internet and email. I yes. said, what's that about? So we've had to adapt to those changes there. And now how much does God play a part in that? And where does the spirit now and the word of God and the call of Christ on a life now intersect that? Because we look more at the secular than the sacred, but the secular is just the absence of the sacred. So how do we put the sacred back into that? Well, you make him in charge of your program. Mm. He's, is he CEO of your life or what? Okay. Is he in charge of it? And so as part of it, God, give me guidance about what you want me to do. Mm. So I see these things. I see, close the doors of those doors that are really, if Satan will have distractors, because if you're going to be a person of impact as you are, yes. obviously he's going to put some of those things, says, you know, Brian, go down this great path. Just because the door's open doesn't mean the one you're supposed to be going down. That is so true. And so we need to be very conscious and intentional spirit and pray through this and be on our knees about it and be co connected and have the dialogue and says connected connected to the spirit mm -hmm. in driving us and having that reassurance and the affirmation that we get from him if we hear and we listen to his voice can you uh, get an opportunity I love your the, just the, the way you handle the holy could you pray for someone right now because going into 214 I believe there mm -hmm. are people right now that really need to get repositioned and understand if I've been called to to be artistic and I've been called to move into a place let me Absolutely. not let me not get out of position would you pray even now Lord, we just, we just pray for this audience. We pray for the viewers. And there's somebody out there right now just wondering if there's a purpose yeah. in my life. And every single person has a purpose. And Lord, help them to know that. Help them with the direction. Give them, bring people around them that can encourage them. Help them to have the courage to take the steps, to say yes. no to the things that are not of you and yes to the ones that are part of you. And Lord, reassure them that you are the one and you have a plan for them, as in Jeremiah says. And we know that that's there and we claim that and we stand that and in your name.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ken, um, I look forward to talking to you again because this is so important. I, th I think the gospel has to be very practical at the same time. It's yes, not sir. necessarily something that should be just in our heads, but it has to be uh, where it translates to our feet. Thank you for your time. It's Thank been you, incredibly in in encouraging.